Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Meerkats R Us. All of the meerkats for all of your meerkat needs, expanding into the distance. Oh my gosh, I mean, and look at how much poop there is. And look how happy you guys are. How, you guys cannot be happy in this much poop. They're like, I'm so happy, we've got lots of family. No, you have too much family. You guys don't need so much family. I am gonna have to just, oh my gosh, but look at the little bellies. Look at the little bellies. I am so, oh, I love, I love the meerkat bellies. I can't help it. And look how many there are. This is not okay. Oh, and there's the babies. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, hang on. We're gonna back up and I want to want to down with the smiley faces for a little bit, you guys. I think the smiley faces actually cause a little bit of lag, just a teensy bit too. Look at all these meerkats. Yeah, we're gonna have to go ahead and rehome a lot of them. But this is this is just Look at this! Oh, there's the belly again! Oh my gosh, that little belly. Look, they're all just sleeping on the ground because there's not enough room for everybody. Okay, no. No, Meerkat 123 has just given birth. Are you kidding me? There's more Meerkat- Are oh, we are gonna be like up into the- Oh, but there's little tiny newborn babies! Ah. Okay, okay, we gotta, we gotta handle this. We gotta handle this. Oh, and Cheetah 13 wants to reproduce but can't find a mate. So we're gonna handle that too. But we're gonna release these Meerkats off into the wild in mass. So hopefully that'll help. But yeah, welcome back, you guys. So I'm so excited to be back in Zoo Tycoon 2 and sharing the amazing adventures in our African safari. And there's so much. Oh my gosh, see, Meerkat 173. No, no, that's okay. Maybe I should just be adopting these guys out, actually, because uh, this is going to take a while if I have to put everybody in a crate. All right, let's back away. Because uh, like a giant mass of super loud, scary helicopters. Yep, look at that. I don't know how they do it. It's a feat of aerial elegance beyond my my knowledge. Oh dear. Oh my. Oh, and there's an Arabian horse giving birth now. Okay. Man, we are busy. Oh no, and Meerkat 120 is now pregnant. Okay, we're gonna have to like clear out the Meerkats. All right, darling, I'm gonna adopt you out. Yeah, we're just gonna have to like clear out the Meerkats. Away goes the little helicopter. We have some Meerkats dying of old age, but when the floor is literally crawling with Meerkats, I don't think we need to worry about that too much. So, oh, look at everybody take a little nap on their little backs. But yeah, we're gonna get back to work on our Nile little project that we're gonna be doing. Um, in fact, I'm gonna show you the faster way to do this. The best way when you really just need to start clearing the animals out can be to like pull up the list. Oh my gosh, and we have a lot of camels. And the sand cats, oh, and why are, you, why are my zebra doikers miserable? Why are you miserable? Oh, do you need do you need some more shelter? Oh, zebra doiker emergency! Zebra doiker emergency! Okay, let's give them a couple more shelters. Maybe they need. Oh, what's this? Oh, a giant tree stump! No way! Will they rest in this? I want to see a zebra doiker in there. Oh my gosh! And there's one that has like jungle theme to it. Okay, zebra doikers. When I come back, I expect to see you in that adorable thing. And it's super dark, so let's try to let some of the daytime pass. Um, except if I do that, then everything slows down because all the meerkats see when you get tons and tons of an animal It can really start slowing things down, too So let's just start grabbing meerkats and just like tagging them. It's like, okay, you're it. You're it. I mean, there's not really <laughs> We don't really need to be very specific here. There's so many of them <laughs> I think I think we could keep going for quite a while and be fine. They really breed quickly that's kind of like, I remember when we first got like, what was it? We started with maybe five or six ages ago when we were first working in this zoo. And now there's like almost 200. Wow, so many meerkats. And I was trying to keep them like in little clans and everything at first and that just wasn't gonna work. There's meerkat 100. You're spared because you're meerkat 100 and I'm gonna name you, um, Sin, let's name you, uh, Sentry, because you get it? It's like a pun on Sentry, and then, you know, meerkats are like little sentries, because the way they, yeah, the way they stand up, like, guards, and you, you get it, you get it. I know you do. <laughs> and for those of you who don't, meerkats are really fascinating to me, and I'm gonna give them a couple little lizards. Uh, they're really fascinating to me, because they watch out for their group. They live in their little clans, and they're eating some little, uh, roots over there, so I'm gonna grab you guys, actually. But they watch out for their group and they'll take turns being sentries and watching for any hawks and they have very specific calls and cries that will mean different things like, hey, there's a, there's a big old hawk coming to eat us. Um, kind of like prairie dogs, actually. And I don't know how distantly, and it's going to be distantly because they're on entirely different continents, prairie dogs and meerkats are related if they're even in like vaguely the same family tree. 
But uh, there was a fascinating study by a gentleman quite a while ago that found. Oh, is that is that is that good? Are we are we good on Demir cats now? I think that's gonna help out. Oh my gosh, and the lag has like almost vanished. Let's let's see if they go after those little lizards. All right, what do you guys think of the little lizards? There's a couple of them running around. Your your group hierarchy is gonna be restructured now. Oh, look at the little. Oh, so many meerkats. Oh, so cute. Oh my gosh, they're adorable. But as I was saying, there was a fascinating study by a gentleman who studied prairie dogs for a very, very long time. Oh, oh, there we go. What on earth is that noise? Who is making like that sound? Oh, I think it was like a baby meerkat maybe? But yeah, study on prairie dogs and the gentleman found that prairie dogs actually have grammar and different calls. Uh, I almost said words, but it's not words. Don't like force human nature onto animals when you're researching them. It's a big problem. But they actually had uh, grammar to refer to like how close a hawk was. So they would have different calls for coyote, hawk, human, snake, different predator calls and different like you know, fellow enemy. Enemy um, prairie dog calls, and then they would have different calls for close, far away, or like immediate danger sort of calls, and they would put the calls together. Oh, there's Sentry. Hi, Sentry. Oh, there's a little Sentry right there. But they would put the calls together in different ways. Like if a hawk was close by, they would use two different calls, and then you could like tell what it meant if you listened to the recordings because of the research this guy did. All right, we're going to get rid of a few more meerkats. And I thought that was fascinating because that just, it gave grammar and a sort of, sort of call structure to, um, to the meerkats. All right, 111, you get to stay because I think that's a cool name and I'm going to name you, um, Alfonsi, like that, just because. Alfonsi, and then, let's see. Okay, 108, you get to stay and I'm going to name you, um, Daffodil. I shouldn't be naming them. The whole point is this is like going to like volunteer at the Humane Society and suddenly you end up with a bunch of kittens. All right, let's hurry up and just get a few more of them out because we're probably going to have pregnancies left and right pretty soon. There we go. All right, now we can start working on the Nile. But yeah, it gave structure to the calls and the call structure of the animals and that just really fascinates me. All right, and let's check in on our road runners, our new additions, just to see how they're doing. They haven't eaten their frog. That's fine. I can pretend that's a spadefoot frog. Uh, and thank you so much to you guys who left comments about, like, the spadefoot frog. Be oh, he just used a little feeder ball! I've never seen a little roadrunner use a little feeder ball before. Do you prefer the little feeder ball, roadrunner? Is that what you prefer? I want to get a good look at you. Oh, look at you. Wait, what's up? All right, there you go. Yeah, little birdie. Oh, oh, he's laying down. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, now he's snoring. Well, that's hilarious. All right, hello, little roadrunner. Okay, gonna groom you. So the roadrunners are doing fine. How are the guests feeling back here? Uh, roadrunner's happy. Coyote 2 looks comfortable in its habitat. Do you guys need like some sort of entertainment? The music makes me want to dance, so the music is helping over here. Um, I feel like they need to spend some money back here. Don't you feel like they need to be spending a little bit of money back here? So let's go ahead and maybe a gift stall, like a little gift stand. Let's dig out a gift stand and put it down here. And maybe a kiosk, actually. So let's see what we can supply for our wonderful guest here. Um, I want to do maybe the reptile or the insect house kiosk. Um, let's see. There's a fountain. Maybe that would be kind of scary. What about the Arabian Nights kiosk? Uh, we could do that right here. That would be kind of fun. Um, or just like an... Oh, there we go. A little discovery kiosk. I'm just going to put a discovery kiosk like right here. And then we're going to go ahead and put like a little gift cart right there. And we'll see if that ha makes anything happen over here for these guys. There you go, everybody. All right. And now we can back up and start looking at our river. So yeah, that, that cool thing about prairie dogs, don't forget it. I just think that would be really awesome. And we were going to make like a restaurant up on a cliffside here, weren't we? And then make the river pour down this way. And I think that sounds like a good idea. So let me see. It's going to be like really terrible. <laughs> Why do I have to pick these ambitious things that I'm probably not going to be able to do? I can never do anything right with these tools. But we're going to make like a little cliff 
It's no, no, I was going to say it's not going to be that big. And then I immediately made it huge by accident. All right. So we're going to do this. And I'm just going to kind of make it go this way. And there we go. So this looks like a good little viewing area. And then the, this is going to turn into like a majestic waterfall leading down into our mimic Nile River. Um, and actually, that brings up a good question. So what kind of biome are we supposed to put our Nile crocodile in anyway? Is it supposed to be like savanna biome? Probably tropical savanna, I would assume. Um, all right, so let's check this out. Because we're looking at hippos and crocodiles right now. So tropical savanna, our Nile crocodile. Yes, indeed, it's gonna be tropical savanna biome, okay. And we're gonna try to make a waterfall, which I've done many times, but it's always so tricky. It's always so tricky, for me at least. I know for other people it's like super duper easy every time. No problem. But guess what, for Siri it's, it's problem. It's always a problem. All right, there we go. I'm um, gonna maybe flatten this over here. Please flatten, okay. And then I'm gonna come back over here. And what you wanna do when you're trying to make a fancy pants waterfall thing is put a wall down and then come back over and you want to make sure that there's like a steep drop off over here. All right, and then I'm gonna just smooth this train a little bit. And then there we go, flatten that. And then you want to come over and you want to grab your water. You want to dig a hole, get your water tools, tropical savanna, and you want to get the deep water. And then, let's see, you want to come along and you want to do this. And don't worry, you won't see your waterfall yet, but don't panic. All right, and then I want to do shallow water right here because I don't want a lot of deep water. And I don't know, actually, maybe you can just do shallow water there too. Um, but I think you have to do deep water at the top. So there's shallow, and then I'm coming back in. Ooh, my goodness. Um, that was really deep water. Maybe you don't need to do that. Okay, maybe, maybe you do it after you take down the wall. So you kind of get the water set up on either side and remove the wall, knock it down. And, uh, okay then, is this, oh, you could just do shallow all the way. <gasps> Look at that, you guys, we have just made, whoops, okay, and I already ruined it. We have just made our waterfall. Look at that, isn't that so pretty? I love that, oh my gosh. <gasps> and the spur tortoise is going to lay an egg. Oh, let's go watch. Let's go watch, because I love watching, like, everybody lay eggs, and historically, our spurred tortoises have had so many problems. All right, there you go, buddy. Give your shell a little wash, scoop your little poop. Um, and actually, I just realized this might take a moment. Might take a moment to watch her so she gets comfy for laying her little egg, but I'm gonna get, ooh, the music's playing from somewhere. But we'll just, oh, wait, 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 there she goes. I kinda need to look this up. I wanna learn more about like how many eggs in fact, if you guys know, leave it in the comments or if you look it up now, uh, how many eggs do African spurred tortoises normally lay? What is their nest condition normally like? Look at the size of them! Oh my goodness, congratulations, proud mama! Congratulations! I'm so proud of you! Oh, celebrations! Celebrations! We've got two little baby African spurred tortoises in there. That's so exciting. All right, hang on, I gotta get in. I gotta get in and... Just gently, okay, I wanna look at the little eggs. Scooch, scooch, I need eggs. African spurred tortoise, all right. It's gonna take a while to hatch, we'll be back. We'll be back, all right. Oh, and those, oh, that's right, sorry. I just remembered we had really miserable zebra doikers. So we need to go check in on those guys really quickly. Are they happier now? Um, yeah, look, they're happier. They're not totally happy, and I think they need some specialty, like, treats, so I'm gonna go ahead and we'll sprinkle down maybe more, uh, let's put down some apples, frozen apples, and see if that does anything, and then I'm gonna get down here. Ooh, it's so busy! Hello, lemurs! Hello, sifakas! I really need to adopt some of you guys out. Alright, zebra doikers, you're not inside the, the little, the little houses like I was hoping you would be, but you're happier now. Oh, look at the baby Sipaka, it's so tiny. Oh, look at you, look at you, look at you. Oh, he's cute, I like him. I like him a lot. Oh my gosh, and I guess there was no hope. The zebra doikers had no chance of getting to their treats because the Sipakas have already eaten them. <laughs> the treats are already gone, look at that. They just like ruthlessly came in and emptied those ice blocks of their apples. So I don't think the zebra doikers would be able to get their, their little treats even if we tried. 
All right, so we're gonna go ahead and make our Nile. So let's go down, get the brush tool a little bit bigger. And I'm trying to think about how we're gonna display this. I think we'll have this whole area. Sentry, oh, Sentry was a, a girl and she's now pregnant. Well, that's exciting. We should name all of her kids after like guard names. All right, and we're just gonna have this river come all the way down here. And then we can have like a viewing area here and then a bridge across. And then more viewing areas on the other side. Because I think that like the right side of the river where the exhibits are, mostly this is going to be where we'll have like animal places and then like a bridge right over here. There we go. This is gonna be interesting. Okay, birch trees, you guys are in the way. You need to move. And then I'm gonna grab my little, my little there we go, water all the way to the end. And we'll have our our nice little thing end right here. There we go. The finnick fox. We have finnick foxes? Oh, we have, of course we have finnick foxes. What am I talking about? They're all over the exhibit and with the little Arabian horses. I'm sitting here. I was thinking of like the red fox for some reason. Well, that was really silly of me. All right, let's come over here. Nice big river. Nice big river. It's not huge, but like in proportion to the zoo, it's a huge river. It's gigantic. All right, and then we're gonna come over here and we'll go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. No, did I mess up my thing? I don't wanna mess up my thing, I want more. Oh, there we go, that's what I wanted. I wanted water pouring down there. And then we'll kind of start editing it a little bit, just making it a little bit more enclosed, maybe making the river a little bit deeper in some areas. Um, definitely varying like the depths and the sizes like we'll turn this into a deeper zone and then what I think we'll do is we'll come back in with our little shovel tools and we're gonna flatten so let's get a smaller shovel this is like the biggest water feature I have ever tried to make so this is kind of exciting all right there see and then we can just start flattening it kind of at random intervals I have a feeling Ben is going to yell at me so much because I'm doing it wrong. I'm always doing it wrong, I am. Oh, but that's okay because I have fun. I have fun while I'm doing it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and like make a little valley. Oh, there! Look at that! Why didn't I just start there? And the plain zebra is now pregnant. We've got so many... Oh, plain zebra is 25, is really thirsty. We might need to ease up the zebra population a little bit. It might be time for a fantastic herd migration amongst our zebras. And zebras make some of the most fascinating migrations in the entire world, in my personal opinion. How many of you guys know about how zebras migrate? Because that's pretty cool. And by that, I mean they travel thousands of miles in big giant herds. All right, we're gonna have this big old, whoops, what the heck is going on over here now? Well, who knows? I'm gonna fix that. All right, let's come over here. And I need this to be, all right, we'll just turn this all into like shallow water. Like it'll just end in a gentle slope thing. And I wanna like do this. Yeah, look at that. And then the way you can kind of make it look a little bit more natural is to change the brush size and just come along and just like spot, 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 see? And it starts breaking it up the way that a, a real river would have a little bit of like weird erosion. Might even leave like some spots where it just does that. There we go. There, now it's starting to look nice. All right, so our river's almost done. And then what we'll do next time is we'll come back in and we'll enclose the river. No, why did I do that? I don't know what I did, but I'll fix it. I will fix that. I just like lowered the entire riverbed. Why? How? I don't even know how I did that. Ah. Yeah, what we'll do next time is we'll come back in and we will enclose the river in fencing. And in fact, I wonder if I do this. Oh, that's so much better. So that was half the problem. The game's like, you're trying to make me have like a bazillion and a half meerkats give birth at the same time. There, and I fixed the river. Sort of. Okay, but yeah, there's the, the you see that you got the basic idea of what I'm trying to do at least. All right, let's do this and this, some of this. There we go. No, not again. Why? Okay, I should just, I should just maybe not do this because <laughs> I keep messing it up. Why? My little Nile River. 
Oh well, there we go. Alright, there we go guys, and we will continue to fix up our pretty little sad looking Nile River. It went down, why did it go down? Go back up, go back up little river, you wanna be, you wanna be a big river, you don't wanna be a pedunky river. But, it's kind of pedunky right now, I'm gonna admit it. But you know what? I bet most rivers that were naked without any plants would look kind of pedunky too. So we'll fix it next time. We'll be adding like the tropical savanna grass. We're going to be enclosing it and fencing. We're going to make sure that the bridges safely go over the uh, the river in a few places. Maybe we'll have some overlooks uh, on the bridges looking over the place. We can get the restaurant set into place. Um, and I was thinking back here. I actually want to turn kind of like this area into like elephants, like lots of room for elephants. And then maybe this area into room for lions. So elephants and lions are also coming up along with the Nile crocodile and the hippo. I think there's a hippo. Pretty sure there's a hippo. I've never put anything other than like the tiny little pygmy elephant. Is there a pygmy hippo? I feel like I've put a small hippo in somewhere in the past, but we'll deal with that. We'll deal with that. But all right, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.